Page 10, a trilling experience. Oh, is it that sweet? At the top of the page, they talk about a, a type of ornament called a trill. There's a lot of different ornaments. We'll cover them as we go along. A trill is where you have two notes, and you play the two notes alternating at various speeds. The speed isn't important, it's just two notes. And it's two notes within the scale, typically. So it's like the music will give you a note, and there will be a trill indication above it. And there's different trill indications. They give an example of one at the top with a TR and then the wavy line. And the wavy line extends for as long as the trill goes. There's others. You might just get a TR, no wavy line. That means the note you're on, you trill it, nothing else. Because you can trill more than one No, I mean, you, you can trill a series of notes. Who, who knows? For instance, look in, the, in this music. It's the second line on the last two measures. You see the trill symbol given there at the, above the staff. Well, the note given is a D here. The key we're in is G major. It's got one sharp. Well, in G major, the note is a D and an E. You have to stay within the key signature you're at. There's a way of altering that, and I'll, I'll get to that later. Just right now, it's the it's the note given and the next note up in the scale, whatever scale you're in, in this case, G major. I'm just going to alternate those. At the beginning of this piece, they write out the trill for you in 16th notes. One e and a two e and a. One e and a two e and a. One e and a two or one and two and. One and two and. One and two and. That would be like the last two measures of the second line, where you just have a D with the trill going across the line. But that was ha that's how it would be played, is here. In the second line, with the TR and the wavy line, well, because the trill is only above one note, you really don't need the wavy line. Just the TR by itself would do it. Just that, then you would trill that one note for as long as it lasts. And then the next note, you don't trill it, you just play it. See, usually if you're going to have a wavy line, it's because it's more than one note. That it, you want to trill more than, you know, keep going. Now, for the disagreement, people don't agree on how trills should be interpreted. They've never agreed since. Way back in the beginning when frill, trills first started, they didn't agree. I'm not going to tell you one way is right or wrong because I don't think one way is right or wrong. I just give you both ways and it's going to be up to you and your teacher how you're going to do it. In the example in the music, they're starting the trill on the note given, which would be the D. Some people, when they see the trill sign, like in the second line, they will start in the upper note and do that. Here, they will start it. Some people will tr start on the main note, the main note being the note given sometimes, and they'll start on the upper note or the auxiliary note sometimes, depending on the situation. Some people will do it based on the type of music. If it's like broke music, or music like in the 1700s and before, they'll do it on the upper note. And if it's like in the 1800s music and after, they'll do it on the main note. There are all kinds of justifications on how to play trills. Forget it. I was taught in college to pretty much always start them on the upper note. And the idea there is that a trill is a second, an interval of a second. It's very dissonant. Well, if you start it on the upper note, it tends to bring out the dissonance a little bit because you want to hear the main note, but you're hearing this other note. You're starting on that other note. Some people say, well, if it's the melody, you want to start on the melody note. So if that happens to be the melody, you start on that note. Other people say it doesn't matter. You'll have to decide how you're going to do the trills. For this exercise, we're going to do it the way it's written in the music, and that is we're going to start on the main note. So it's going to be one e and a two e and a, one e and a two e and a, one, two e and a, one 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 e and a
two and one and two and one and two and and we're going to play the trills that way the basic idea with trills is speed is not important they have to be even and controlled because there's different ways of doing trills you do a controlled trill which is what i'm talking about rhythmically done you decide how many notes you're actually going to play here are 16th notes here the other kind of trill is called an uncontrolled trill where it's just a shake because a trill can also be called a shake where you just just and you're not really counting the notes or nothing you're just shaking I don't like those kinds of trills I don't use them I even when professionals use them because they're not even and they're not controlled sometimes the notes are louder than other notes or they don't play as you it just sounds terrible in my opinion but a bunch of people use them so there they are but as far as the lessons go I'm always going to encourage you to make it a controlled trill that is decide how many notes you're going to play and play it rhythmically here it'll be 16th notes so let's cover this first right hand and we got this first major already one and a two and a and then the next two measures same thing second line you just come up here is and then one five and then one four and then a trill again you see the, the ones with the trill symbol are played exactly the way they are played in the first line and when I do these like the last four measures in the right hand I only aim one finger. I keep my hand in that position and go down and the other finger just goes along. Which finger you aim is up to you. You should practice both. So I can aim the thumb or the little finger. Usually I aim the melody note. In this case it would be the little finger. And the other finger just stays there. Just make sure you, you flex the wrist when you do that because the tendency when you do this is to tense up because you want to hold that position. And we have to fight that. You want to stay relaxed. If you'll flex the wrist, that will help you do that. So just flex the wrist. Left hand broken chords. You hear? F sharp C. And then a one, two, three, four about it for the left hand. Put the hands together. Go real slow, it's fun. The only really articulation to give you maybe are the accents. That one, I don't know why they're giving you that, but okay. So put in the accents from the right hand. They have a few of these phrase markings in the... You can't really connect those with the hands. The pedal will help us out. The main, the only articulation really I think you need to worry about here is the accent notes in the right hand. Then we do the dynamics. Well, they're starting loud, and this is the right hand, some melody. And they want to crescendo up to very loud. I kind of have problems with that one. I would prefer you come down, maybe start moderately soft and go up to maybe moderately loud. I don't know why they want you to play this loud, but I would play a little softer than that. And then the second line, you're staying there. And that's basically the dynamics. Speed-wise, well, that depends on the trill. How fast can you do this correctly? Now, however fast you can play that, that tells you how fast you can take it. And it has to be your speed. And Joe Coso is just playful and happy and all that. be my speed you take it at whatever speed is right for you then they add the pedal 
you don't need pedal on this. I just played it without it just fine. But they've added it, and it will help us connect the right hand on these. We can't connect them otherwise, so let's try the pedal. It's going to be overlapping pedal, so the notes go down first and then the pedal. And when I change the pedal, like in the second line, they're changing the pedal at each measure. I don't know about that, but okay. It's going to be right after I play the notes. So the pedal lags behind the notes. So in the first line, in the second measure, I play the notes first and then I play the pedal, or push the pedal down, play the pedal. I'm going to lift the pedal right after I play the notes in the next measure. Right so. Then at the end of the line, first line, you push it down. But then when I go to the second line, I'm going to legato pedal this or overlap it. So I'm going to push the notes down in the measure and then change the pedal. So starting with the last measure, the first line, it's here. Now you play the notes and then change. Here, like each measure. Don't pedal the trill. A lot of trills are pedaled. But they're saying not to right now. And that's the way we're, we'll do the pedal here. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms and all that. I'm not going to do any dynamics. I will do the accent. So let's just try it really, really super slow together and see what happens. I'll give us two counts. It goes ready and go and roll. Not like that. Ready and go and. Mm -hmm. 